All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed that little cruise cinematic portion of the episode. And we are now ready for to start entering our destination information into the MCDU to begin uh, our arrival procedure into Gold Coast International Airport, Yankee Bravo Charlie Golf. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Um, let's go ahead into the perf page and navigate over to the approach phase. So the Q&H, the local Q&H at the moment at... Um, Gold Coast happens to be, let me check that real quick, 1006. Uh, is that correct? Let me just check that one more time. Yeah, no, 1016. So 1016 is set. The local temperature right now happens to be 25 degrees, so it's pretty hot out there. Uh, wind conditions uh, imply that the wind is coming from a direction of 150 degrees at a speed of 12 knots so we're going to have a bit of a crosswind as we come in it's actually going to be quite a bit 12 knots is quite a bit transition altitude is again 10,000 feet same as sydney and our decision height for today i'm looking at the charts right now happens to be 209 feet so let's go ahead and enter that in and there's all the information entered in we're about 40 nautical miles away from Bernie. So at Bernie, we're supposed to be at around 18,400 feet. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter 18,000 feet and go ahead and start managed descent. So we can begin descending down to our um, to the appropriate altitude. All right. So we're about 23,000 feet right now. Um, yeah, that crosswind is now slowly starting to turn into a tailwind as we start moving away. Um, start traveling north with re respect to the wind. Um, so yeah, it's going to be harder for us to maintain our speed. So I think it's the right time now to actually start controlling our speed and get us down to about 280 to 270 knots. We'll also deploy the speed brakes here so that that can help us out a little bit because we also need to continue descending. Um, we'll also go ahead and enter an altitude of 6,000, uh, maybe 7,000 feet in here so that the aircraft knows that it needs to descend down to 7,000 feet by the time we reach this Chuuk waypoint. And uh, we should be able to do it. We just got to make sure that we have um, the right amount of speed brakes and stuff like that to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and full speed brake, full lever of shame here. There we go. Yeah, but look at that sunset over there in the distance. That looks fantastic. In fact, that deserves a screenshot. I'm going to go ahead and screen that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. See the sun just setting over there in the distance. All right, yeah, our, audit, our attitude right now is we're, we're descending at a rate of 3,500 feet per minute. Let's go ahead and take the speed brakes in. I think we've achieved our desired speed here. Uh, and we continue to descend. We're under 20,000 feet. I think we can also start to see the coastline there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we can start to see the gold coast, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is definitely going to be a nighttime landing, as far as I can see. Time right now within the sim is 7.54 p.m. So it's quite late, actually. It's taken us quite a bit of time to get here. So yeah, the arrival into Gold Coast itself is actually pretty self-explanatory. You just go straight, uh, continue, take this initial left turn into Sela, and then travel all the way straight, self-vector ourselves, and do a base leg left turn traffic pattern all the way into runway 14 um, at uh, Gold Coast. Oh, forgot to engage managed descent here down to 7,000 feet. Here we go, let's go. 7,000 feet. Continue the descent, maybe do open climb, maybe do vertical speed. Yeah, maybe we have to control the vertical speed manually here. 2,500 feet per minute, sounds good. And let's get the speed down. Yeah, let's keep the speed at 270 knots. Sure. All right, so coming under 14,000 feet as we speak. So we have around uh, around about 12 or 13 nautical miles to get down to 7,000 feet. So we have to descend another 7,000 feet now. Uh, we're also trying to slow down here, down to 250 knots. Um, but yeah, we seem to be on profile for the descent. We can also start to see some street lights and stuff like that. Um, Gold Coast itself is pretty sparse scenery, but over there seems to be the main city center. So, um, yeah, let's try to see if we can see the airport. Yeah, there's the airport. So we're going to be coming in, uh, going there, and then coming around and landing back at runway 14. And parking at the domestic terminal 1, just so you guys, um, if you guys were wondering, that's where we're going to be parking. And we're also getting awfully close to our transition level here. So 12,500 feet is the transition level. We're going to be switching to um, the local altimeter setting. And let's also get some lighting here. There we go. That's better. Now we can start seeing some stuff. 
Uh, the lights up top look all good. We don't really have to change anything over there. And 12,500 feet, let's go ahead and switch to QNH1016 there. Perfect. There we go, 250 knots is what we're maintaining, perfect. Which means we're abiding by proper FAA regulations. And there's the coast, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's known as the famous Gold Coast, because the entire thing is decked with um, brown sand. I've actually been to Gold Coast quite recently, in fact. Actually, why, are we, why do we have st um, these speed brakes extended? Let's go ahead and retract them. There we go. Yeah, I've been to Gold Coast in the past. It's a very, very beautiful city. Um, very beautiful place. I've been to the beach. Um, I'll try to see if I can find the specific Airbnb I was staying at. It was actually really, really beautiful. We had the we had the view of the actual ocean and stuff like that. Uh, it was really, really beautiful. But I love I love this city. It has a good good mix of residential areas. Quite a sporty place as well. I saw a lot of um, like cricket pitches, um, uh, soccer places, and stuff like that. It was very, very um, inviting as a place to live, even. Uh, at Sela, we're supposed to be 2,900 feet, so let's go ahead and enter 2,900 feet into our, um, oh, let's go ahead and switch this to 2,900 feet, there we go, there's that left turn we're taking, and as soon as we start getting under 10,000 feet here, we'll go ahead and take the landing lights to on, and switch the wing light on as well here. And we can also go ahead and arm the landing system. So we know exactly how far away from the airport we are. Which we can actually, we have a visual of the airport. The clouds are pretty sparse at the moment, so that all looks good. There we go, 9,600 feet, and we continue to descend. I think we can, uh, I think we're on profile right now. So not too much to do here. Maybe uh, increase the rate of descent by a little bit more, but I think the aircraft is handling that perfectly, as is. Here we go. There's that left turn. Let's look at what the people are seeing out the window here. We might have to actually start slowing down a little bit more here as we get closer to the runway. But yeah, this is a beautiful sight. All right. So after this point, the aircraft is practically going to go bananas because it doesn't know how to do this turn. So we're going to have to do some self-vectoring, basically fly straight. So take control of heading mode and then take a left and then come back into this ear pod waypoint and then regom at 2,500 feet and um, capture the glide slope and the localizer and r land at runway 14 at um, Yankee Bravo Charlie Golf or Goat Coast. Sorry about that. Apologies. We can begin slowing down, in fact, now that we're at 250 knots. Let's slow us down to 240 knots. We can begin to gradually get our speed and everything down. But yeah, there's the main city. In fact, this is the... I've actually not flown in this simulator during the night whatsoever. I think the only time we've done it on this channel properly was when we did our flight. In fact, even that wasn't like a nighttime flight. The Helsinki to Copenhagen, we saw some lights during that time because of the cloudy weather conditions, but... Oh, look at that. See, now the aircraft is starting to go bananas. So we're going to have to take over manual control. There we go. Let's go into heading select mode and basically fly straight. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to also have to take some control over the vertical speed here. So I'm going to say 2,200 feet per minute. There we go. But yeah, we haven't actually done any major night landings in the sim yet. So this is going to be practically the first time we're going to be landing with some lights. Which is good. Some good exposure to the channel, I guess. 6,500 feet, continue. And at ERPOD, according to our flight plan, uh, or according to the charts here even, let's look at where what altitude we're supposed to be at. Uh, 2,500 feet. So 2,500 feet at ERPOD should do us just fine. And we're on profile for that. Just so we don't forget, let's also go ahead and get the runway turn off as well as the nose light to taxi. Uh, sorry, the takeoff mode. And... Um, Let's also slow ourselves down to 230 knots. We're going to have to do some uh, pretty huge turns here. Here we go. There's the ocean over there. The deep blue abyss. We also have some stars. We have the three kings there. I think that's the three kings, if I'm not mistaken. The Orion's belt, as they call it. But I'm not much of a stargazer myself. So I wouldn't really know. Alright, 4,600 feet. We are right on profile, doing just fine. In fact, we can slow our rate of descent down to 2,000 feet per minute here. And um, 230 knots is just fine. 
In fact, just for my comfort, let's slow ourselves down to 220 knots. Why not? Here we go. And just to make sure the runway is over there. Perfect. Cloud ceiling is actually kind of low here, now that I think about it. In fact, let's slow our rate of descent down to 1,700 feet per minute and also get the range down to 10 nautical miles. Let's get a little bit more uh, lighting in here as well so we can see stuff. There we go. Perfect. We have the glide slope coming up here. Perfect. And let's get down to 2,500 feet per feet. And uh, just so you guys know, our missed approach altitude for today's flight is going to be 2,000, uh, sorry, 3,000 feet. So we're going to have to dial this up to 3,000 once we're, uh, once we've captured the localizer and glide slope. And I'm going to start taking that left turn here momentarily as well. So in fact, right now seems like a good time to start that left turn into AirPod. Here we go. And let's also slow ourselves down to 210 knots as we do that. Perfect. And we can also take flap one here. In fact, why not? Oh, are we over the flap retraction speed? Yeah, we are. Okay, let's go ahead and take that back. Yeah, we're, we're going to need to slow down here quite a bit. But it's fine. 2,500 feet. We're already at altitude here. So here we go. Look at that. Look at those buildings and stuff like that over there in the distance. Looks fantastic. All right. Are we slowing down now? There we go. I think we're below the flap one retraction speed. Perfect. Flap one has been taken. And let's also continue that turn a little bit more. We need to capture that localizer as soon as possible. We're about 12.6 nautical miles away from the runway, from what I can see in the primary flight display. And the lights and everything just look absolutely fantastic over here. And flap. All right, we're trying to maintain the speed here, so continue taking that left turn 2,500 feet is checked and let's slow ourselves down to 200 knots as well beautiful look at those skyscrapers and buildings over there that looks beautiful in fact let's take a take a little picture of that here we go all right continue the left turn the sooner we get that localizer, the less work I'm going to have. Yeah, let's go all the way left here. I think we overshot the localizer a little bit, but it's fine. We should be able to recapture that. Here we go. We can also take flap two at this point and slow ourselves down further. 190 knots. Here we go. Localizer's here, so let's go ahead and arm it. That should be able to capture that all by itself. And we have visual of the runway right there. Perfect. Everything is good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, wait for the glide slope to start coming down. We'll go ahead and take flap three gear down at that point. And let's also make sure that the approach phase is armed here. There we go. Activate the approach phase. Perfect. 2,500 feet. We're about 10 nautical miles away. Let's slow ourselves down to 180 knots. And the glide slope is active and is coming down. Let's go ahead and take flap three gear down and slow ourselves down to 170 knots. We can also go ahead and set the missed approach altitude, which is 3,000 feet. And there we go. We are now coming in for a nice, hopefully smooth arrival into Gold Coast International Airport. There we go. Yeah, we have a basically a, a head-on headwind, as you guys can see with this arrow indication over here. We have a 22-knot headwind coming from a direction of 136 knots. So yeah, a wind check would have been imperative if we had ATC here, so... That's all right. We're getting the glide slope. We are perfectly on the um, approach path here as well. Let's go ahead and hand... Uh, actually, you know what? Slow ourselves down to 160 knots even. There we go. And our landing speed is 128 knots. Approach speed is 133 knots. So let's go ahead and hand over all of these speed-related controls to autopilot as well. So we don't have to worry about any of that here as well. Yeah, but this is some good screenshot real estate right here. Some good screenshot opportunities. Here we go.
Yeah, those screenshots were wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and take flap full. And we are coming down nice and easy. Let's go ahead and make sure that the cabin spo the spoilers are armed. Now they are. Um, cabin check. So let's go ahead and do a cabin check. Cabin crew seats for landing. Please. Cabin crew seats for landing. All right. Our attitude is pitching up quite a bit here. That's all right. I think we should be able to keep the glide slope for as long as possible. Hopefully. Yeah, that headwind is really killing our speed here. That's what's happening. We're trying to really maintain that 130, 33 knots or whatever. There we go. We're starting to pitch down. Oh, look at that. We're getting a few gusts. That's all right. I'll let autopilot do all the hard work and take control of the aircraft as soon as we get to around 1,000 feet. We still have a few sunset colors over there in the distance. Look at that. Beautiful. As soon as we land, I'm just taking a look at the charts real, real quick. Um, as soon as we land, we can vacate all the way to the end. We're probably going to go all the way to the end. Um, and that at Kilo, we vacate a Kilo, then take a left on Charlie, and then basically park anywhere at Terminal 1. I'll be taking control over when this thing reads 1,000 feet. One thousand feet, my aircraft. All right, autopilot is disarmed. I have two reds, two whites, and the pappies. I'm gonna try to follow the glide slope and localizer as best as possible. Maybe a little bit right. Actually, we're doing fine. I'll just maintain this attitude. Here we go. Doing just fine. We actually have a perfect headwind. Actually, couldn't have asked for anything better. Maybe a little bit right because we have a little bit of wind coming from the east. Here we go. I can't wait for replay functionality to be implemented in the sim. Ooh, we're getting a little bit of turbulence here. Oh, we're getting pushed around. Some end wind gusts over there in the distance. All right, disappearing over the windshield there. Oh, wow, 500 feet, all right. Got it, got it. 400. All right, we have two reds, two whites again. Let's maintain this, a little bit high. Correcting. Alright, we're landing. Minimum. Landing. 200. 200. Alright. 100. 100 feet. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. Charge Retard. thrust levers. Wow, what was that at the end? All right, still very smooth arrival. Reverser is armed. Idle reverse. Slowing ourselves down. That was a weird gust at the end there. I don't know what that was, but we'll take it, I guess. That's all right. We persevere through hard circumstances. There we go. We didn't even need the whole runway. Perfect. Reversers disarmed. And let's go ahead and take manual braking and try to vacate here on the left. Here we go. Beautiful landing into Gold Coast, ladies and gentlemen. Apart from that wind gust at the very end that kind of tipped our landing gear down. But apart from that, it was a very, very beautiful arrival here into Gold Coast. Let's go ahead and get some lighting in the cockpit. Let's go ahead and take the uh, lights off here. Wing light off, strobe light can come off, nose light can come to taxi, runway turnoffs can stay on. And we basically take a left here as far as I can. Actually, no, we can just go straight and park anywhere here on any of these terminals. So we're going to have to take APU arm. There we go. Let's get rid of all of these um, systems. Perfect. And let's continue taking a left turn here. And we can basically... Oh, there's the taxi. We kind of missed that. Just slow ourselves down here, puppy. There we go. And where shall we park, ladies and gentlemen? Let's see. I don't think there's any jetways or anything here. The lighting in the sim really needs some work. That's... I have to say that. The lighting in the sim definitely needs some work because I can't even see the taxiways here. That's alright. Alright, we'll go ahead and take a right here. 
and just hope to God there's some sort of jetway that we can connect us. If there isn't, that's also fine. Yeah, I don't think there is. There's no jetway. That's all right. Let's slow ourselves down here. Here we go. Continue going forward a little bit more. Let's also go ahead and take the runway turnoff lights off and come to a full stop right here. Let's go ahead and get the parking brake on. And let's get see the APU position. So we're only 55% in the APU startup procedure. Let's also go ahead and get the taxi light turned off. So we're going to have to wait a while before the APU comes on. Maybe around about a minute or so. Uh, yeah, but very beautiful, smooth arrival into, um, into Gold Coast. Uh, quite a few bumps on the way and quite a quite a quite a severe headwind that we had around 22 knots So that was severely debilitating the performance of our aircraft as we came into land and that gust at the end did not help But whatever it's fine. We have to deal with circumstances as they come along uh, APU seems to be at 88% there we go. I think APU gen is active Maybe in just a second or so 93% There we go APU is available. Let's go ahead and get APU bleed up and running and turn off the engines no longer need them also get the flaps all the way up there perfect and the flight time for today's flight i don't really know how to read all this information i think one hour and four minutes i think it was yeah i think it was there we go let's continue and uh engines have been turned off let's see the n2 coming below 25 percent and we can go ahead and get the beacon light off as well there we go beacon light can come off and we can come up here and disarm the fuel pumps here as well. Perfect. And let's get the seatbelt signs off so the passengers can begin deboarding the aircraft. Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that was a beautiful nighttime, evening time arrival into Yankee Bravo Charlie Golf, all the way from Sydney Kingsford International Airport. If you guys haven't seen the departure out of Sydney, I highly recommend you do. It was a really fun departure. In fact, both the departure and arrival had us really battling with wind throughout the entire experience. But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, make sure to give it a like, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and also press that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button so you guys get notified of other full flight episodes like this on the channel as well as other um, sort of mini tutorials on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and X-Plane 11. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for watching and thanks for flying by.